What's up college football fans, quarterback fans, welcome to another QB Spotlight video. If this is your first time tuning into the QB Spotlight channel, we sincerely thank you for watching. We know there are a bunch of other fantastic college football content creators out there that you could be watching, so we thank you for spending some time to, to dive in and, and watch us. And if this is your first time tuning in, we're just a big quarterback hub. We spend the majority of our time talking about college quarterbacks, and we have current and former quarterbacks come on and talk. We have coaches come on just a lot of quarterback kind of trainers and, and performance coaches that will come on and talk as well but with the season starting we're doing more of these game previews and these game recaps that we will be doing so if you like that type of content you like this type of quarterback content please consider subscribing and our game previews are a bit different than, than other previews because of the simple fact we're just focused on the quarterback position so we may talk a little bit of defense and a little bit of, of you know other positions but we're focused on the quarterback position so with that said let's talk drake may right today we're talking drake may north carolina spencer rattler south carolina what does each quarterback need to do to have success against the opposing defense so i want to start with drake may first but before we do we need to look at the south carolina defense and what he's going up against where are the holes where can he attack where are their strengths where could there be some challenges for drake may so let's look at the defense from last year last year south carolina's defense while they ranked at the bottom of the sec in points per game giving up almost four touchdowns i think it was 27 and a half so it was towards the bottom they did really, really good against the pass. They were giving up less than 200 yards per game in the air, which is outstanding, especially in today's day and age of college football. They had 12 interceptions, which is second in the SEC. So they did a good job creating turnover and limiting really, really big passing performances. Uh, and so that's a credit to them, right? But where things kind of took a, took a fall from grace was, yeah, the points per game wasn't good, and that was largely due to to the rushing defense. They were second to last in rushing yards per game in the SEC. So while they did a good job preventing passing yardage, essentially, they were able to be a lot of, of you know running ability against them. So their strength was the passing game, their passing defense. Their weakness last year was their rushing defense. So you know you hope they improve if you're a South Carolina fan, but if you're Drake May, that gives us a few options to attack them. Of course, if you're a talented quarterback like Drake May, one of the best quarterbacks in the whole league, you're going to attack them passing, running, every type of, you know, offensive threat that they have, every type of offensive scheme they have, you're, the, you're one of the best quarterbacks in the country, so you're going to attack them either way, right? But I think off the bat, starting off the first game of the season, coming off a huge year like last year, you don't want to do too much. One of the North Carolina's losses last year was against Georgia Tech, and that was the only game Drake May played in that he didn't have a touchdown running or passing, he had zero touchdowns. He had several. He had a, what, one or two games where he didn't throw a touching, a, a, a passing touchdown, but he still had a rushing touchdown. In this game, he had zero touchdowns combined, and they lost against Georgia Tech. So flop games can happen, and there's a few reasons why. One, you overlook the opponent. Two, you try to do too much. So if you're Drake May, I think number one, don't try to do too much against South Carolina's defense. Let plays happen. If you don't have success the first few series, that's okay. Trust the offense, right? You just don't want to do too much because that could force some things, could force some turnovers, and you already have a good secondary defense that you're going up against in South Carolina. With that said, number two, if you're Drake May, use your legs. <laughs> I mean, you're going up against one of the worst rushing defenses in the SEC last year. Maybe it's fixed. If you're a South Carolina fan, you sure hope it's fixed and that, that they're going to be able to stop that. But at the same time, like I, I attack that. If you're Drake May, you had over, what, 600-something yards on the ground last year, one of the best athletes in college football, not just as a quarterback, but athletically. You can run. So I would attack that rushing defense. I would get the defensive backs on their heels if you're Drake May. I would use my legs as an advantage, and doing that helps set up the pass game. So I think you're going to take your shots to your, too, right? Like like we said, you're Drake May. You have a great offense in North Carolina. You don't care that you're going up against a good secondary or a good passing defense of, of South Carolina. You're still going to take your shots. I think running the ball and running it early will help set up some passing games or some passing plays and some passing potential successful plays downfield right so if you're drake may i think your overall takeaway is number one don't do too much like we talked about at the very beginning of the video if you do too much that could potentially lead to a flop game if you will right do not do too much let the, let the gameplay happen let the gameplay come out attack them where they are weakest which is the which is first the run game with it with a with a rushing defense like south Carolina had you want to attack the run game and if they improve great then you make adjustments during that game but attack the run game and let that set up the passing game you know drake may is going to get his numbers if south Carolina's defense they're just going to try to keep everything in front but if you keep running the ball if you're drake may if you have success on the ground for the running back eventually and hopefully if you're unc's offensive coordinator or offensive staff 
the secondary for, for South Carolina starts to really focus on the run game, that's when you can take your passing yards, or to, like, that's when you can take your, your shots deep, right? So again, Drake May, use your legs, set up the pass game, but Drake May is such a good quarterback too in his defense, he doesn't need to use his legs to set up the pass game. He can go out and just throw it over the field, but from our point of view, I think it's a good strategy to potentially go about it that way. Not that I know anything, I'm just some guy on YouTube talking, right? All right, with that said, let's move on to, to Spencer Rattler and South Carolina's offense. What does he need to do against North Carolina's defense? Well, first, let's talk about North Carolina's defense. And if, if you kept up with college football at all last year, you know that, that their defense was poor, to say the least. Um, again, much better than I could have done, but not very good statistically, right? A lot of points were scored against them. They were dead last in passing yards given up in the ACC. They were second to last in rushing yards given up in the ACC, ACC excuse me, and they were dead last in points per game uh, given up in, in the ACC with like 31. So they gave up 31 points last year on an average uh, weekly, right? And they gave up a bunch of yards in the air and a bunch of yards on the ground. So if you're a North Carolina fan, it's like, wow, what, what are we doing here, right? If you are South Carolina, you're, you're thinking, okay, great, we can run, we can pass, we're going to be able to score some points. However, North Carolina does North Carolina does return, I think, eight starters. A, a good amount of their production is back, but that, that, that's either that could be good, that could be bad, right? Does experience really matter if you want our defense that played that poor? Maybe. You could. I think you definitely have to give the potential that they improved. I don't think you can get worse than last year, so I think improvement's on the way. Uh, but regardless, if uh, regardless how much they improved, regardless if they have stars back, there should still be some good opportunities for Rattler to attack. So let's talk about what Spencer Rattler needs to do to to have success. And you know, if they get into a shootout to keep up with Drake May, or, or depending, you know, how this game goes, a lot of times when you think a shootout's going to happen, it ends up being a lower scoring game. But still, it could be definitely a shootout. So with that said, I think the number one key is obvious, and that's something we've talked about before. Any South Carolina fan knows about Rattler. Don't turn the ball over. No turnovers. You don't want to give Drake May any extra opportunities to score, any extra opportunities to to get out to a lead or, to, or extra opportunities to come back if they're down. So if you're Rattler, there, there, there's no need to force things. No turnovers. That's been Rattler's kind of biggest thing, right, is, is just – turnovers at not the best times in the game now why he did improve a lot last year and he showed out what against was it clemson and tennessee had really good games you're hoping that he can be that version this year and, and if you've kept up with south carolina reports or any of the news they're, they're they're they've talked about the improvements he made they're really high on him so if you're a south carolina fan you, you hope that's true uh, as you know week one rolls around number two this is the last kind of key again just just brief broad keys and this is obvious again but I think especially for, for Rattler, get in a rhythm early. Find ways to get in a rhythm early. That, that, that's important for every quarterback, but especially Rattler. Because when he's on, he's on, right? When, when he's on fire, he, he, he's, it's, 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 it's dime after dime after dime. So you want to set that up. Sometimes it's hard to be on fire off the bat. So if you take a bunch of deep shots and miss, if you take a bunch of deep shots because you think, okay, UNC's offense is, or UNC's defense was poor last year, let's come out swinging. If you take some deep shots, then it's kind of easy to get in a rut if you don't complete that. So my thought is, get in a rhythm early. A lot of success last year was, was you know, when he was in rhythm and a good groove. So whatever that looks like as offense, whether that's screen, short passes, as you know, people typically say, I don't know. Just get him in a rhythm early, and you're more likely to be in a rhythm and a groove taking some shots deep later on. Overall takeaway from Rattler, like we mentioned, don't turn the ball over. That's obvious. That could be said for any quarterback in any key, but I think it especially comes, it's especially important in this game against North Carolina. So one, don't turn the ball over. Two, find ways to get in a rhythm early and allow that to lead you to bigger plays down the road. So overall takeaway from Rattler, if, if, if I was like talking to him, again, not that he would want any advice from some YouTube guy, I would say play loose. Let it rip. You can still take care of the football by, by letting it rip. His success last year came when he was letting it rip. His, his, his struggles last year, whenever he was being too timid with the ball, trying to aim it, place it, make the perfect throw, you can still take care of the ball and let it rip. So if I'm Rattler, yo, go, play loose, let it rip. You're going against a defense that's probably going to give you some some favorable matchups, at least if you know last year tells us anything. So if you're Rattler, play loose, let it rip. You can still take care of the football having that mindset. But... North Carolina fans, South Carolina fans, just college football fans in general. I want to hear from you. What, what do you think your quarterback needs to do against these defenses coming up? What what keys did I miss or what keys would you want to add to the game plan? You can be nice about it. You don't have to call me an idiot, uh, but if you want to, go ahead. But what keys do you think you need? each quarterback needs to do besides what we talked about on this list? And, and you know, if you have anything to add about the defense as well, please do. 
Uh, but with that said, if you like this video, please like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. It really does help. Uh, I think we're growing a little bit. I really don't know. But uh, if, if you like this type of content, please like, subscribe. We'll be doing these quarterback breakdowns throughout the year. And if we, depending on the fan bases that give us the most views, we'll probably stick to, to following those quarterbacks this season. But again, uh, let us know in the comments below, comments below your thoughts, and we'll see you next time. Peace.